and I'm going to be talking about what you need to do during a laning stage as TA and what you should focus on in a normal matchup. I'm also going to go over some panic scenarios later on, but I figured first, why not talk about the everyday scenario. So let's hop ahead a little bit until this game actually goes to laning. So, uh, flash going on at first. <clears throat> So, of course, playing TA, you start out picking up the rune, you have your starting items that we have covered, you send out the salve with the courier, and you go down mid. Uh, in this game in particular, I get an enemy hero that is, in my opinion, one of the favorite heroes for TA to go up against, which is the Invoker. And it's a matchup that you can deal with quite well, no matter if you go Refraction or Cyberblades level 1. Skilled Cyberblades due to uh, us fighting early on there. But you could definitely skill Cyblades here as well if you really want to bully. Now, obviously, there are a few things that you should focus on, and one of them is your fraction. How should it be used? That is the first thing I actually want to uh, to mention. You have enough mana to use a few refraction charges, but your mana region is really bad, and you should see it as you have your shrine and your bottle as your only sources of extra mana to use more refraction charges. Now, you should try to use them quite aggressively, in my opinion, in the beginning of the lane. Just to make sure that you um, dominate the last hits the way you want to, and don't fall behind too hard. Now, one thing to really keep in mind is that whenever a range creep is about to die, popping refraction to try and secure the range creep last hit is extremely important. Uh, for instance, there you can see popping the refraction, getting a range creep last hit, or nigh in this case, which is ever so important. If you deny the enemy range group, that is a massive win in the early game. And every single bit of experience counts. Second is that you should not stop try to angle you and your enemy for uh, cyberlady. This may sound logical and something you should do without me telling you, but a lot of players play T8 and don't actively do this. But Try and keep yourself always at a direct angle between your opponents. So if he runs up, I run down. If he runs down, I run up. Uh, just try and keep the balance between you guys. See how we always try and keep the creeps between us, or rather TA tries, and Invoker tries to offset that. That's going to help you deal damage to him. Of course, after using your uh, refractions aggressively, you should go for an early shrine. And right now we're seeing 9-4 last hits against the... Uh, 8 and 3 Invoker, which is perhaps not the best, but uh, it's it's still decent, and I think we're doing the right thing in theory. He's playing very good build, this is from a, from a pretty high level game, I believe it was 7.4 average or something in the US. <clears throat> he just did some weird shenanigans pulling creeps to the mid, but don't really need that, and a lot of our creeps ran back anyway. So... Another thing I want to talk about is that when you lane against anyone and the creeps are far away and you can't Cyblade, you could just aggro pull. If you aggro pull the melee creeps from the Invoker back onto your range creep, that's going to give you a few targets to Cyblade from. So if you feel you're being bullied a lot and you can't really hit the enemy because he's too far away and the creeps are kind of far down as well, every time you run down you get hit, then just attack the enemy, pull the creeps back, and that's going to help you quite a bit. Now, of course, we're getting to a point where we're a little bit higher level. We don't have to worry too much, having two points in refraction. And we can just look for the side blades non-stop. As you can see, even while last hitting, we're always looking for the angle to try and do some damage to him. <clears throat> so, this is also a big thing. What you saw right there is a gag from a Spirit Breaker coming in on the mid lane. Didn't kill us in this case, but try and keep your eyes on the minimap as much as possible if you're laning mid on any fragile hero like TA, SF, Invoker, Storm. These are heroes that want to uh, have a nice early game and are going to get shut down hard if they die a single time. Uh, what makes that different from, from other mid heroes, for instance a Juggernaut mid or Mirana mid or Queen mid, well they don't actually get ganked that easily. And if it's a very low chance of you dying mid, then you're probably not going to get ganked. But TA, quite easy here to gank, so keep an eye on the minimap. It's going to save your ass a lot of times. Um, now, we're also approaching level 6 here very soon. 
get a nice little gank attempt here. Doesn't kill, but it still forces out the invis for Invoker, which already is big damage. And more stuff goes down. Um, <clears throat> in the end, these kind of clashes, TA is pretty fine when it's the same number of heroes on both sides. It's really only when you get massively outnumbered that you're going to struggle. Because the refraction turrets are going to keep you fairly safe. If they don't focus my teammates there, uh, they're not going to bring me down due to stuns from my teammates, right? So, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and show you what happens when we hit level 6. Because we're about to get that, and of course the traps are going to be a very, very big uh, thing for us. What I did there as well is just run up and punch the dragons a little bit. If you get ancients that don't have regen, which means anything but the newest ancients with the, with the root and the minus armor, all other ancients you can hit a little bit and then let them be. That's going to be fine because they're going to lose their HP and they don't regenerate. Okay, so let's now talk about the fact that we got those. We hit it, and the first thing a lot of people do is can't put traps on runes. You have to run there, though, to get that. While I run down here, using the shrine as well, I drop one trap over here. Getting some high ground vision and also clutch ramp positions is extremely useful with your traps. So you want to place them always in a clutch location like here, or here, or... Well, on the mid ramp is always good, because that gives you kill potential onto the enemy mid. Um, but in general, just look for ramps and tight spots, and put your traps there. And that's going to be useless if you don't do what I said earlier. Keep your eyes on the minimap quite a bit. It's really important. So, as you can see, second trap goes down over here. Uh, if anyone tries to gank me even from up here now, it's very likely that we're going to see them wrap around, unless they smoke. Radiance top tower. Next point, during a laning TA, you will find yourself at a point where you think, okay, can I take Ancients? When should I start taking Ancients? Should I have done it sooner? Uh, you can see me at this point in this game, at 7 minutes in, I start stacking. Unfortunately, we got the Prowlers. They're the ones who carry the region, and they're going to regenerate the cubes up. There's a slight chance that you get that, as you see, 20 HP per second. It's pretty insane. Um... However, that doesn't really matter so much. TA wants to start farming ancients a lot at the point when she has power trips. That is pretty much the key timing when you want to start farming ancients actively in this current match. Uh, if you had a hero mid that would be even harder to lane against, perhaps you would go into jungle a little bit sooner. And then if you see ancients that are easy to kill, meaning, for instance... See if we have them on the map here. We actually don't have them. We just have Prowlers and Dragons. Dragons are okay. Uh, you could try and kill that. But the easiest ones to kill would be the Scaly Lizards. They are uh, extremely easy to bring down. They do quite a bit of damage, but if you have your Shrine available as well, you should be fine. As you see here, with the Power Treads, we quite quickly bring down all the small creeps, and then the regeneration is gone. Good thing to keep in mind if you're going to farm the Ancients. Kill the small Prowlers. They carry all of the regeneration, so it's extremely important. Also carry the lifesteal R. <clears throat> so we started clearing Ancients. It's at 8.30 right now. We're going to shout mid and then into jungle. This is what you want to do as much as possible around this time of the game. Around 8 minutes or 9 minutes, you should be jungling heavily. You should not be laning that much anymore but your focus should switch to jungle because you can farm it so quickly. And even here, we're farming the Ancients. And look at the timer. We're going to farm this dragon, run out, make sure that we don't block the camp again. And here they are, the Thunder Hides, the favorite creeps. Rumble Hides and Thunder Hides are the favorite creeps of TA. Extremely easy to bring down, and we can farm them so quickly. However, don't forget your mid lane. You could always call someone to take mid experience, in fact. Because you could stay in jungle here and take all these creeps. Uh, so if you want someone to take experience mid, that is perfectly fine too. But that is uh, if your supports don't have something more important to do. Let's see. Another thing that I think is uh, very important is that you understand what you're jungling for. Okay, We talked before about how the item builds they should be going for, either Desert or Blink. Uh, but you're jungling just to get up enough 
items and levels to start taking over the game. Normally, it's when you get your blink dagger that happens. But in this instance, if you have good rune control and you find yourself a haste room, for instance, keep in mind that Tia can join a gank at any time. You don't have to have your blink and death already before fighting. We can TP to the offlane and go for a kill and make sure that our team is fighting well. It's not gonna set me back too much on the mid lane. So it's just about staying active. Don't see it as you just having a set pattern in jungle, you only want to do this, right? If we look at the game, sure, I'm a little bit behind the Invoker in CS right now, but he's been part of one kill, I've been part of three kills. I'm playing the more active game while also farming up decently. Uh, so switching over and looking at the net worth, you can see we're still at a good lead because a few of our CSRs are going to be ancient creeps, which give a ton of pull. That's mainly the focus that you want to have during the laning stage. Um, another thing that I didn't really mention yet is that you should always, always, always try to have this trap down on the enemy high ground. And if the enemy have a sentry, you should probably just purchase a sentry of your own and get rid of that. Because if he has a sentry, he can play much more aggressive. Right now he is pretty aggressive because he knows that I'm jungling. But I'm talking uh, as soon as he hit level 6, if the enemy have a sentry on the mid lane, you're not going to be able to do anything to him. Uh, this was actually a beautiful play by Invoker, abusing the fact that TA jungles a lot and taking down a tower really quickly. So keep your eye out for that. Definitely caught me off uh, a little bit that he would be that aggressive against our lineup. But some things are unexpected to us. That is the majority of the stuff that I wanted to share for laning. And I'm going to be talking more in the next video about unfair matchups and hard counters to TA, how do you deal with getting ganked, how do you deal with uh, a poor early game, and what do you do to recover. So that's going to be the next part. And then I'm also going to be talking about mid-game and late-game in future videos to go through entirely what you should be doing at different points in the game. Hope you enjoyed this little part, and I'll see you around.